welcome back to the course uh, continued course on statistical mechanics and I hope you are having fun and uh, good morning or good afternoon wherever you are and uh, so we continuing with the, with the basics and we did the monodromic gas in a very detailed form the reason of that I wanted to you to go through the working of monodromic gas and it is not just monodromic gas is the simplest system, but it also you get the beautiful wonderful stuff that is used repeatedly which is kind of unbelievable that giving that it is such a simple thing. But then you, I always um, draw the analogy with quantum mechanics, in quantum mechanics you have the simple systems like particle in a box, uh, harmonic oscillator, rigid rotators, uh, but those three models play enormous role in condensed matter, uh, physical chemistry, condensed science and physical chemistry. Uh, the particle in a box, you know, goes over to be used in uh, explaining spectra of uh, um, conjugated polymer like deuterine and then dependence, that a, a 8 ml square term. Then it goes on to use as I showed in the last class to the density of states and that is with a model of free electron gas, a very well known model and uh, with its root over energy dependence of uh, density of states and that plays a very important role. So, there is amazing that how, uh, so if you look you read the book that is given uh, was run by uh, Feynman statistical mechanics, you will find uh, that and also Landau lives for statistical mechanics, these two are the best books uh, in the field in uh, earlier things, who dealt with foundations and other parts of then you will find that they are amazing that uh, how much importance this very simple results find in those uh, master uh, books of those masters. So, now I want to spend some more time with the diatomic gas we have again done it little but we did not little in, in a hurry. Now I want to review and now again it is kind of you can say that we did first you know, as my, my analogy of painting, uh, painting of the wall we do it in uh, not in one shot you paint it once and then you paint it again and you wait for a time let it dry then you paint it in the final coat usually the third coat that comes. And with, through that you know uh, the way our mind also works is very much like that we get to it. So, now we will do the ideal diatomic gas look at the term that it is ideal you know uh, ideal and that it is uh, diatomic. So, now we have uh, not monatomic spheres but we have molecules like nitrogen, we have more oxygen, you know, this kind of molecules. Then we will do polyatomic also, which we will particularly we talk of water and we will talk of ammonia uh, and some other molecules. So, first we will do diatomic, then we will do poly polyatomic and uh, the equations you might have seen before, but it will be done more rigorously now and more connection to the real world, ok. So, let us start then. Uh, so, we now have in case of molecules that these molecules are more realistic systems and um, and that um, they have they, they continue to have the uh, if this is the diatomic molecule they continue to have um, translational motion of the center of mass, but they also vibration they have vibration and they have rotation ok. Now, we have to not translational part we have done and we can now you have done a lot of probably a lot of these things that you go to a uh, reduced mass description where I can consider translation is that of the center of mass with m1 m2 by m1 by m2 the reduced mass of that and if they are the same then it becomes half. But we do have to take care of now rotation and we do have to take of vibration and as I repeatedly say we will again go back to quantum mechanics and find the energy levels from the vibration and rotation and you use them. We can also do it um, uh, uh, classically, we can also find out the rotation, uh, um, rotational kinetic energy and uh, vibrational kinetic energy and you can integrate them the same way we did in, uh, in the translation. However, in translation we did both classical and quantum see we basically did um, 
classical when you evaluate the partition function, but when you went to density of states we did quantum and one can show if I evaluate the partition function from the quantum uh, particle in a box in at 11, then high temperature limit I will go over to quantum mechanics that you can work it out yourself or we will do somewhere down the line. However, in the rotation and vibration things are little bit dicey particularly in case of vibration. In vibration, vibration frequency is many times in thousands of centimeter inverse like OH stretching is 3600 centimeter inverse and you know 1 kVD at 300 Kelvin is 200 six centimeter inverse. So, now thermal energy the so the energy of these molecules are 15 times more than thermal energy. So, that means gap between two vibration energy levels is 15 times kVT and that you cannot treat uh, by classical mechanics anymore. So, energy levels are discrete and you have to do it quantum mechanically uh, uh, not uh, and the situation rotation is not that adverse to classical mechanics, but it has also need to be treated quantum mechanically particularly in low temperature. We will see high temperature you can still get away by doing classical mechanics, but not at low temperature. So, uh, then also as we said that uh, many, 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 many we, we need the talk of vibrations in many things and again what we learn from the class is simple uh, uh, non-ideal uh, diatomic and polyatomic gas will go over to very complex system. That is my reason to do these systems repeatedly uh, because in the, this you know in chemistry, in physical chemistry we need this much more than a physicist need. Physicists do not need them that much. Physicists very easily go to interacting systems and they do a general phenomena like phase transition. But we in physical chemistry we think of uh, the molecules they are flowing from one part to the other, they are undergoing a chemical reaction and when they undergo a chemical reaction then entropy changes, the amount of entropy changes in a chemical reaction or the vibrational degrees of freedom that play a role in chemical reaction or spec vibrational spectroscopy, rotational spectroscopy. So, we are more in the microscopic world and we explaining our mandate is to explain these properties and that require uh, a, a, a much more detailed understanding of the spectrum. So, let us continue then with this after this motivation. So, let, let us consider just a diatomic, you can consider nitrogen oxygen, then we have to translational degrees of freedom of the center of mass that is 3, then it rotate uh, like this you know in a linear molecule it can rotate like this, it can rotate like that, this rotation is not does not change anything. So, we have two rotational degrees of freedom and we have the stretching vibration and the vibration degrees of freedom, the total number of degrees of freedom is 6. And then uh, there is interesting things that come in which uh, as the experimental observable things and gives us very, very important properties. So, one of the reason we are so interested physical chemistry is so interested in uh, vibration and rotation is that there is a through vibrational spectroscopy and through rotational spectroscopy we this some of the things which we can access to like anharmonicity of vibrational frequencies experimentally we get through a vibrational spectroscopy. Then the molecules are not harmonic, we will assume they are harmonic, but they are anharmonic otherwise they would not undergo a bond breaking event as all of you know. That information about the anharmonicity, how when you put puts them away, how the bond weakens is very important quantity that we get through vibrational spectroscopy. The rotation, when molecule rotation, they rotate very fast, they get couples to um, uh, vibration and called Coriolis coupling. That is a very important thing in the bond breaking event in a, a, a atmosphere high, a, a high up in the atmosphere when molecules rotate very high temperature, rotate very fast. So, those are the things that the mandate of a physical chemist um, and, and that we are you know and so those very important information of the anharmonicity or rotational uh, coupling constants, we get it from this study that I am going to tell you today. And these are the things I did not tell because I did not want to burden you, but now we have to do these things and get the what they call uh, the uh, A out of this, the real fruits of our study. Okay. So, we are talking of ideal gas, we are talking of molecules right now not interacting, that is the kind of things I said here that they interact. The, the coupling, coupling 
uh, between that, but we are going to ignore that now and we are going to do with the non interacting. So, we are ideal gas and the rotation, translation, vibration are not interacting with each other and there are uh, actually these interactions here become very, very important, but we will do that later. So, if I do not consider the coupling, then I get a very, very nice, very, very nice um, um, decoupling because the energy levels are not coupled to each other. So, remember my total partition function, molecular partition function of a single particle. That is why I use the notation small q, m stands for molecule. Then my q m is sum over all the energy levels, not energy states, each individual energy level. We'll, we'll, uh, we have to change that later as we go along. And then the energy is sum over rotation, vibration. So, energy is sum over e, e, I dot e, e plus uh, E vibration plus E uh, rotation, vibration, translation and plus E electronic. That is so, then these, these are separate sums, separate sums. So, they go into a product. So, total molecular partition function is product of partition function of electronic, the translation, rotation, vibration. Now, as I said, much of these uh, studies at room temperature ambient conditions, uh, the electron is in its ground state unless they are electronic transition optically excited, which is again a very huge branch of physical chemistry. If not, then we are, uh, we are looking at a large separation between ground and excited electronic states and that does not affect the thermodynamics uh, most of the properties. So, we can ignore that. So, this, this we, we do not need to take talk of electronic right now. Then my molecular partition function become product of translation, rotation, vibration. We already have done translation. Now, we are going to do rotation and vibration and we will do the vibration first and then we will do the rotation and you will see um, a lot of very, very interesting things that I will talk to you today which I have not talked before and they are amazing, amazing particularly the, the amount of results we get and the natural phenomena we can directly access to uh, by the vibration part. Just we translation I told you that it is very efficacious, but here you will see um, even more dramatic things, okay. So, now we start, we can uh, write the vibration of Hamiltonian uh, before we go to partition function, we need the Hamiltonian and then we need the energy levels. So, vibration is this half mu mu square, you can write in many ways, uh, you know, you can write half uh, many times we there and we write half omega square into square. That is my, my uh, favorite um, vibration and having done half omega square into square, okay. So, um, okay, all right. So, now. Now, uh, the quantum partition function is when you have bore most atomic molecules. This is very important as I was taking that for example, for a vibration of frequency 300, 3000 centimeter inverse, the energy H nu, uh, H nu is a vibration of frequency in 15 kBT and uh, water uh, O H H, the symmetric vibration. Uh, Uh, they are uh, together going like this symmetric that is 36 if I remember correctly centimeter inverse and 1 kBT, 1 kBT, um, 1 kBT equal to 300 Kelvin is 206 centimeter inverse. So, we are talking of 36,000 centimeter inverse versus 206 centimeter inverse. So, you are 18 kBT. Um, then this bending is about 2000 centimeter inverse. So, we are talking of 10 kBT. So, these are very, very large numbers. That means, in vibration energy levels, now um, um, vibration energy levels. So, if I talk of a vibration potential in surface, then vibration energy levels, this gap is uh, say 15 to 20 kBT for water stretching and for bending, it is uh, bending, it is, is you have about 10, k, 10 kVT, where T is 300 Kelvin. So, this gap is large, this gap is large. 
is a vibration, 0 point vibration energy and this is a first one. So, this is the scenario we are looking at and um, we, we, we have to, uh, we cannot do classical mechanics uh, because classical mechanics, what does classical mechanics say to you? Say energy levels are continuous. So, I can go from one energy E to next one a small amount uh, by uh, hundreds of kbt, one hundredth of kbt or something, this, but that is not true, that is true in translation where I have the next energy level just sitting next to it of the order, but uh, not in A, not uh, not in vibrational and not even in the rotation. Here the energy levels are uh, spaced so wide that I cannot consider it to be continuum. So, then I cannot do classical mechanics, this is a prime case where I have to do quantum mechanics and the quantum mechanics aspect plays extremely important role uh, that we will see very quickly and most of the results that we do vibrational degrees of freedom even thermodynamics using classical mechanics uh, by using half k x square. Uh, so, I write I half k x square, then I write my Hamiltonian is vibration plus then T square by 2 m. So, and then I do the integration uh, by writing the partition function, molecular partition function and doing integration there, I am just doing one dimension, one particle and uh, dx dp e to the power minus beta h and then uh, uh, this double integral I do and I have both uh, x and t as a Gaussian, I can do the integral, that is a trivial actually, uh, two Gaussian integral. Uh, so, one again uh, is the half k x square, no longer volume because the particle is now constrained, uh, particle is constrained by this potential. So, then I get root over pi k by m, root over uh, pi m by k and then uh, it, it, this is again 2 pi m k b t that 2 pi k b t, 2 pi k b t by k from this term and 2 pi m k b t from this term. That is a classical partition function which is trivial uh, and that I telling you it does not work, it does not work in most of the cases. So, we have to do the quantum mechanics. So, this kind of classical approach which is trivial uh, because my I have such a simple Hamiltonian and I can integrate and get the molecular partition function then go on and put the uh, capital Q and then A equal to minus k b t l m k uh, and I can go on doing my rest of the stuff, but that does not work. So, now we have to do a uh, little bit more. Um, uh, so, now uh, in quantum mechanics we know the harmonic oscillator. So, so this kind of uh, energy levels that we have uh, you know Schrodinger solved the system for us like he also solved particle in a box. The one of the reason in quantum mechanics textbooks I probably told you before that you do not see any name all the weight in hydrogen molecules because Schrodinger solved all of them. There will be there is a very nice book collected works on quantum mechanics by Schrodinger and where you see that he has solved everything particle in a formulation of Schrodinger equation then solving it for particle in a box and solving for a harmonic oscillator, solving for rigid rotator by a hydrogen atom and hydrogen molecule all the way is quite problem. I, I got that book very cheap in our uh, Calcutta Presidency College bookstore um, uh, by paying a couple of uh, couple of rupees and it was a wonderful position that I had an old book, somebody bound it and there are some kind of notes here and there, but that book was an eye opener for me that. Uh, uh, that it was and I felt much more, much more understanding of the how quantum mechanics developed and uh, is a very important historical statement. However, now coming back we use Schrodinger's um, result for uh, statistical mechanics and uh, here are the energy levels of harmonic oscillator that energy levels this, e, e, this is a 0th energy level, uh, the 0, 1, 2 and this in the energy of this is half h nu. Uh, and uh, and then uh, mm, and this is one plus half, so it's half h nu. This is three by two h nu. This five by like that it goes. I have to add it up now. So the vibrational partition function is sum over this n zero to infinity. I have up all the way n plus half h nu the one term by kbt. This is my uh, uh, canonical uh, single vibration partition function, canonical partition function. And uh, I have this, that is why the temperature T is coming. So, that means my, my this harmonic oscillator 
which is oscillating here, um, these guy is oscillating, but this is in a temperature bath with a temperature T <coughs> and temperature T plays a very important role because that allows the relative because of the energy gap relative weight of the different energy levels. You can easily see how why the many of the cases is this particular zero order energy level plays such an important role. That is why in vibration such a big deal to zero vibration level has been such a big deal for many other reasons, but in, in thermodynamics that is very important. But even then even in zero vibration level it plays a very important role. So, now I can do this uh, calculation because you know I take the half out. Um, so, I am going to do that this um, h nu by 2 kBT. So, q vibration is e to the power minus h nu by t then I have a 2 kBT here missing here I have 2 kBT then I bring here this is correct in book, but the when it was transferred from there it was this uh, mistake was made. So, now e to the power minus h nu by 2 kBT. So, this is the sum that I have to do mm. and uh, uh, this is very easy right because if I put x equal to e to the power minus h nu by kBT. If I make that into x, this is if my x, then I have partition function becomes e to the power minus half h nu by kBT n equal to 0 to infinity x to the power n. Good that it starts from n equal to 0 to infinity. And I know that this series when x is less than 1, this is nothing but uh, 1 by 1 over x, all right and good. So, now this is become my. So, this h nu by 2 kBT that is in front that comes h nu by 2 kBT and this sum, this sum which is a geometric series becomes 1 minus x and x is e to the power minus h to my kBT. So, this is my partition function, a beautiful and neat expression. And uh, actually, in this case, Schrodinger did all the work, giving us these beautiful energy levels. And uh, now we'll have a lot of fun with this expression. So this is now my partition function, and I'm going to do some thermodynamics with that now, because I now know how to do uh, extract free energy from this. I know how to extract entropy. I know how to extract. Specific it and specific it terms of an entropy of the transfer to be explained. We wrote a paper uh, last year, long paper on water and the whole thing of calculation of entropy uh, of the vibration modes of water, but those are in, in intermolecular vibration modes. But lo, uh, low temperature solid, uh, this thing we will discuss uh, now and we will probably discuss more later, but we will discuss it certainly definitely discuss it now. So, now uh, this uh, beautiful expression that I have here, I am going to use that. Okay. So, again rewrite this expression because we love this expression beautiful e to the power minus h nu by 2 kBT 1 minus h nu by 2 kBT. So, characteristic temperature now I introduce one thing I realize that that h nu by kB remember kBT is energy the dimension of kBT is energy and remember energy ml square mass by t square the dimension of mass, length and uh, time, kBT is energy, H nu is also energy, H nu is also energy, both are energy. So, now uh, I realize then H nu by kB, H nu by kB has the dimension of temperature. This is the dimension of temperature. Uh, that is now uh, that because this must be dimension of temperature because it has to be dimensionless because it is upstairs. Now, I define a temperature as very important characteristics. See, it is very interesting you have one universal constant Planck constant, you have another universal constant Kb, and you multiply it by, by the frequency. And you get a temperature, it is a beauty. Planck's constant, Boltzmann constant, and the frequency. So, together define a temperature, and that temperature plays a very important role. That temperature is denoted by theta vibration, you know, vibrational temperature that the 
how hot a vibration is. Now, I can rewrite introducing this notation that e to the power minus theta by 2 t 1 minus theta vibration by t. So, this is now my new um, my rewrite my uh, partition function. Hmm. Remember that it is a very beautiful thing, but remember that 2 a factor of 2 is there. So, now I go and do the partition function. So, this um, so this is the q vibration. Now, I want to go to free energy. So, free energy I know that there are n number of them. So, if num if number of uh, n number of non interacting identical harmonic oscillators. So, uh, that is the thing. So, then my q n is q to the power n and uh, and then I write free energy a equal to minus k b t l n q and that n comes out this n comes out in front giving me in here and then k b t remains here. So, n k b t and l n give me l n to the power minus 2. So, this is just using the one uh, previous uh, slide or previous page and give me. So, now uh, this is the I will go back to theta vibration again. So, free energy now is uh, I can do something more. Uh, I note that remember the, the, we have to keep track of this minus, I have to keep track of this minus. So, this part has two part, one part is the numerator part, denominator part and numerator part then ln exponential ln e to the power minus x is l x. So, h nu comes out is minus and minus becomes plus k b t, the k b t comes denominator here that cancels this k b t. I get n by 2 h nu. So, this is the first term that comes from there. Now, this comes in the denominator the minus sign that makes this minus plus. So, I get a plus here. Then I can n k b t this n k b t here and then l n 1 minus h nu by k b t. Remember that 2 is not here in the denominator. So, this is the free energy. So, free energy of a harmonic n number of harmonic oscillator is given by this quantity. Okay, this is well and good, there is no need to spend too much time there. Now, I want to calculate the entropy, this where the fun starts. So, I do that, so my free energy is here, I take derivative with respect to temperature. Remember that has no temperature, this term has no temperature. So, that goes to 0 and then I have here, here I have two terms, one is that uh, one is this temperature and this temperature here. So, when I take the derivative I get two terms and that is they are shown here. One term is this. Uh, so, one term is just this term. I take the derivative with respect to temperature this disappears and I just get this term. Other term n k b t will remain. I go and take derivative with respect to that this little complex because first ln x is 1 over x. So, that will go in the denominator then I have to go inside and take a derivative and when I take a derivative I this term goes to 0 then this minus comes with the minus, but then I take derivative of that exponential comes down minus minus become plus. However, I have t in the denominator. So, another minus come minus t square. So, that minus will be carried through minus, but that 1 over t square 1 of the 1 over t square get cancelled by t. So, I get 1 over t remain and Bolt, Boltzmann constant gets cancelled. That what happened and then when I do all that, so I told you 1 over, so 1 term is the first term that comes and here uh, because this is after taking derivative of exponential d by dx 
e to the power minus x is minus e to the power minus x. So, that remains from that term and one, as I told you one goes to the denominator then goes to denominator and there is one more negative sign here. So, um, what happens in that derivative we have the in the derivative we have the following thing. Uh, there is one negative here and that get cancelled by this negative another negative comes from here third negative but then fourth negative comes from here. So, I get a positive term. Mm. So, this is my definition of the entropy this plays a very very important role in many many calculations. So, let me my so, this is the entropy of the of a harmonic oscillators n, n, n number of harmonic oscillators this is look at that is a very strong dependence on uh, frequency nu, very very strong dependence it is in e to the power minus h nu and this is over e to the power minus h nu. Now, mm, when uh, let us consider some things uh, first the strong dependence on it is one term then the enzymes and many many molecules DNA and many cases the bond vibrations you know, this is something which is amazingly interesting, but we will we'll, we'll talk of it little bit uh, little bit now this this particular issue. Now, before I do that uh, let me consider the following thing that uh, what happens when nu is small? There are some cases when nu can be small like in you know, uh, uh, iodine in iodine vibration is about 500 centimeter inverse. There are some vibrations which are even smaller intermolecular vibrations they can be smaller of the order of 100 centimeter inverse or even less uh, some collective vibration and I uh, will I'll, I'll now explain what is the collective vibration. Collective vibration when you put many molecules together then the their translational modes they are constrained their translational modes are got, but number of degrees of freedom must be uh, maintained right. So, say I have n number of molecules put together uh, there are 3 n uh, vibration then we know that they become 3 n minus 5 if linear 3 n minus 6 if a nonlinear degrees of freedom that come. So, these degrees of freedom go over to the in, in we call them intermolecular vibrations. So, they could be rotation of the respect is like consider uh, C still beam then there are rotations of this kind or even long polymer chain there are many many motions which are bound motions, but they are very low vibration molecules. Uh, and so, then they can be low vibrational uh, low frequency modes and then uh, then you can start playing certain games. You can say okay if nu is small let me consider nu is small when nu is large then we can easily see when nu is large temperature kept fixed then e to the power minus h nu by k b t goes to 0 and I have ln 1 and ln 1 goes to 0 and then I say I have okay I go to nu very large nu very large is uh, this quantity would go to 0 and then I have this quantity goes to 0 I have only 1 compared to 1 this is small h nu by k b t is large again h nu by k b t large means this term goes to 0. That means, if I look at the limit large frequency limit that h nu by k b t much greater than 1 if I look at that limit then this quantity goes to 0 because of this small quantity in front, but this e to the minus h nu by k b t will kill it this will go to 0. So, this term will go to 0 h nu by k b t will go to 0 will become very small I have left with 1 and as I already described it in one. So, entropy is going to go to 0. So, entropic contribution of a large vibrational mode is negligible that is why many many times in molecular calculations we do not consider the contribution of entropy of vibrational modes this is a very important very important statement that I am making. However, that is not the case 
in this case of collective modes that I said, uh, you know, the collective modes. Now, let us see that low frequency modes that come in. What will happen in low frequency modes? Now, H, let, me, let me consider the other limit that uh, H nu by k v t is much less than 1. Believe me, there are cases like that in collective modes that in water in many cases they are 10 centimeter inverse, 20 centimeter inverse and uh, in solids you know, you know less than 10 centimeter inverse modes are there and they play a very important role. To, 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 uh, amazingly nobody thought that they will play such an important role but they play important role and we will come to that in a minute. So now when now nu becomes very long then I can expand that. I now say it is a, a, a h nu by k b t small, I can expand it to the minus x and that e to the minus x I can write as 1 minus x, this one cancels this one and this become plus x. So, I have n k b h nu by k b t, k b k b gets cancelled, I have h nu by t sitting here which is nothing by uh, my, I have done it before. Um, my h nu by t sitting in a come in front. Now, lay, let us look at this quantity. Now, nu h nu by k, uh, this is small. So, again I can expand that, I can expand that. So, this will become 1 minus x, 1 gets cancelled. I have get h nu by k b t coming out from here with a plus sign in the denominator. This h nu by k b t, I said 1 minus h nu by k b t, but since nu h nu by k b t must less than 1. I can uh, neglect the next term. So, now h nu by k b t that, uh, so I have 1 on from numerator, denominator I have h nu by k b t and that now cancels uh, h nu uh, by t and I am left with um, a k b term here and that goes upstairs. So, it has I get a just a k b contribution from this the entire things. And I get a contribution from here h nu by uh, t from here. So, high low, temp, low frequencies have a very different contribution to entropy, they come up with a significant contribution. So, while high temperature, high frequency modes make no contribution to entropy because h nu by if they are all in exponential, however, they are all in exponential like this term, like this term. But in a low frequency as I just discussed a significant non-zero contribution comes and that play extremely important role. and that is where this seemingly trivial calculation that you are doing played an enormously important role in understand in a, in a, in a, color, in a, in a very large scale large uh, important phenomenon and that is nothing but specific heat of solids. Now, specific heat of solids specific heat of solids, low temperature solids is an extremely interesting thing. Uh, 